Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video about what these little buttons do on the side of a flight controller. This little thing here is called a DFU or a boot button and it does a very important function. When you press it and apply power to the flight controller it starts it in DFU mode or boot mode and that allows you to flash it. Now normally the way that we flash a flight controller and I've done this loads of different times, uh, check out the links below for things like my INAF for Beginners series, is what we'll do is we will plug the flight controller in, wait for it to boot up, and then we'll connect to it. Uh, we'll find out what version of the software it's running by typing version, and it'll show us that this is an older version of INAF 2.6. The thing we're really interested in is the target Matek F765. So we'll disconnect. Type exit. Actually, that's probably a better way of doing it. And then what we'll do is we can flash this flight controller using the DFU mode. Because what we'll do is disconnect, go into firmware flasher, find that target, Matek F765. There it is. Choose the version of flight control software that we're after, we'll go for the latest, and we'll say full chip arrays, which is always a good idea if you're going from uh, one version to another, and then we'll say load firmware online, it'll load it from the iNav servers, there's all the information you've got, and we'll click flash firmware. Now when I click it, watch what happens in this top corner. At the moment we're talking over COM8, it could be whichever number is just assigned on your computer, I'm gonna click flash firmware, and it says communication with bootloader failed. Now this is the kind of stuff that you can sometimes get into with this, where you are struggling to flash a flight controller and you start to think, uh-oh, hang on a minute, why is it not working? Now it might be that we just need to power cycle it. So we'll unplug the power and then we'll replug the power back in and we'll give it another shot. And this time what's happened is the iNav software has told the flight controller to reboot into DFU mode. And that's because the, even though it wasn't connected fully, there was enough of a conversation happening between iNav, in this case, it could be beta flight, it could be anything, and the flight controller to reboot the flight controller so it will be flashed. And it doesn't take too long at all. And this is what DFU device firmware update or a boot button. Now in the old days, things like these little flight controllers didn't have little buttons like this. They had two pads that you had to show with a piece of metal. These days it's a lot more sophisticated. Now the really nice thing about DFU mode is DFU mode or boot mode is actually hardwired into the flight controller. And sometimes you'll go on a forum and talk about somebody who's panicking because they think they've bricked their flight controller. That's actually really hard to do because the DFU or the boot mode that this board has just been made to do via iNav flashing it. So let's just click connect to prove it's all worked. Uh, say tell without a wing. If I kind of move all this stuff on here, there it is all moving. Then we can actually force the board to go into DFU mode. Say for example, that we'd flashed it with the wrong type of firmware. That can sometimes happen. You have to be very careful by doing it the way that I've just showed you, where you go in and you have a look with version first and use the same target. That'll usually mean that 99% of the time you'll get the right one. But let's say, for example, you cannot get anything to work and those two ways that I've just showed you don't work. There is one other way and that's by actually using that DFU mode button. So let's disconnect. Let's unplug the flight controller from the USB port. So there it is, it's completely unpowered. This time what we're going to do is we're going to go in firmware flasher. We're going to select the same target again, Matek F765. There it is. And we're going to select the version that we're after. This time we're going to select no reboot sequence. So now it's actually going to not try and reboot the flight controller. We can also turn on flash on connect. Now this time what we're going to do is we're actually going to hold the boot button, we're going to press the little boot button on the flight controller in. It's easier if I turn it around for me to do it this way. I'm going to press and hold that button 
and then I'm going to plug it into the power. So there we are, we've loaded the firmware. Okay. We're going to press and hold the DFU button in, which is this little button here at the top. I'm going to press and hold it, and then we're going to plug in the power. Now what's happened is the flight controller has actually started in DFU mode, and we can see that because it says DFU on the screen. So now I can just flip, click on flash firmware, and away it goes. And this is the really cool thing about the DFU boot button. Even if you accidentally flash your flight controller with the wrong version of your software, it doesn't matter. There is something called a bootloader in here and that boot mode loader can be booted into or the flight controller can start in that DFU mode where you can actually flash it by just holding down the button and telling iNav that there's no reboot sequence needed because the flight controller is going to start off in DFU mode. If it's working, it's talking, and like we did at first time, the flight control software will normally reboot it into DFU mode so it can access the memory and put the new software on the flight controller. However, if that doesn't work, that's the way I do it. Just press and hold the DFU button while you plug it in and you will be away and it will work. Hopefully that's helpful to some of you. I know for some pilots they get really worried about uh, when they flash a flight controller and maybe it doesn't come up properly or they can't connect to it then with their computer. What have they done? Could potentially be something like the, as easy as you need another USB cable. Uh, some USB cables only have power in them if they're designed for charging only. You need a USB cable with the four wires in, a positive, five volts, a ground, and the transmit and receive pins. If, uh, if you're having problems, that's the other thing that I'd recommend, try another USB cable. But if that doesn't work, then all I would do is do what I just did there, press and hold the DFU button while you're powered up, tell I now if that's the way it's gonna boot, and away you go. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media, and if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.